Welcome everyone. Myself is Dr. Praveen Kumar Pathak. I am working as an associate professor in the Department of Geography at Jamia Millia Islamia University, New Delhi, along with my uh, colleague Ms. Manisha Sharma. So global environmental changes actually multiply and compound effect on agricultural productivity, you know, water resource availability and infrastructure in the global south. And therefore, you know, it is very important to understand the climate change impacts on human migration. Now, there is a growing, growing scientific evidence which is indicating us that environmental migration is a reality, however, very complex and multi-causal. And so, therefore, uh, if you look at climate change and disaster, they actually amplify the existing pattern of human movements. So, whether they are circular, seasonal or rural to urban migration and you know we need to uh, have robust data system in place if we have to understand how these climate change are actually modifying the human migration patterns. Uh, if you look at some of the recent evidence of you know how climate change is accelerating the internal migration, you know there are basically two ways through which it is happening. One is the sudden and slow onset of impacts, for example, you know, floods and storms, you know, how they are impacting human migration. And secondly, through, you know, the slow uh, onset. So, for example, you know, desertification with climate change, we observe that there is increasing uh, coverage of desertification. The green cover is being lost uh, with, you know, increasing human settlement, urbanization, agriculture and uh, you know also stress from uh, grazing of animals. So, the desertification is increasing. Furthermore, you know there is also a huge loss of biodiversity because of you know human uh, um, activities in different part of the world. You know even the biological hotspots are also under huge stress due to the episodes of you know tourism uh, activities in these ecological uh, hotspot uh, hot regions. Furthermore, there is also deterioration in the land and quality, land quality and forest degra degradation because these resources are important for you know human settlements and also for various construction activities for wood related you know demand for wood is rising. So, all these you know direct and uh, you know sudden and slow processes are likely to impact you know human movements. We also observe that there is a you know melting of glaciers there is glacial retreat, there is also ocean acidification, sea, sea levels are rising, there is increasing tendency of salinization. So, all these processes which is related to climate change are likely to affect human movements in some way or other. So, if you look at the sudden onset, you know, uh, extreme weather events uh, tend to displace a lot of people and one of the uh, estimates suggests that over 300 million people within their countries you know have been displaced due to this sudden extreme uh, you know movements uh, basically you know floods um, has led to movement of more than 300 million people in the last 50 years. On the other hand you know if you, even if you look at slow onset of climate change impacts for example water crisis or sea level rising they also have triggered lot of movement of human population within country and between countries. And so therefore you know climate change related migration of human population is an important concern. Moving forward you know uh, according to the World Bank projection of 2050 climate induced internal migration across developing countries is projected to you know increase somewhere from 44 million people today to roughly 216 million people under different climate demographic and development scenarios you know so as climate change impacts are becoming more uh, devastating more pervasive more uh, critical along with the demographic diversity in the part in different part of the world. So, on the one hand we observe the western countries are experiencing rapid population aging, there is a scarcity of young people. On the other hand we also observe in global south that you know the fertility levels are going down because of declining mortality. So, we, so we have large, large lot of countries who are experiencing demographic dividend which is basically high proportion of people who are in the young age categories. And similarly, you know, there is also 
massive movements towards economic development, infrastructure development, digital technologies. So, there is a lot of change which is being observed. So, demographically world is very diverse. Development wise, you know, there are a lot of countries in global south which are emerging economies and climate is actually impacting everyone in different ways, disproportionately the global south nations. So, with these three different scenarios, you know, there is a projection that climate impacts are likely to increase human migration and the numbers are likely to increase more than five times by 2050. So, therefore, this is a clear cut in a indication that we need to invest into efforts of climate mitigation, climate adaptation and policies of migration. Furthermore, you know, if you look at, you know, how climate change is affecting the characteristics of people who are migrating, you know, their skill set and human capital. For example, you know, uh, we know that um, it can lead to increase in distress movement. So, when you have, for example, floods, you know, thousands and thousands of people are made to flee their places just to survive along with whatever they can take away in their hands. A lot of people have to move out due to drought. For example, in Maharashtra, you know, Vidarbha region, in places called Gujarat and many other places in India, we, we find regular episodes of, uh, you know, drought incidents in the country. Similarly, every year we also find, you know, episodes of floods. So, with these climate related, weather related extreme events, which trigger sudden impacts uh, for human to move. So, therefore, when these episodes happen, you know, people tend to migrate and look for opportunities to save their lives and their, you know, livelihoods. Furthermore, you know, climate change affects men and women differently, you know, and which in turn affect their mobility. So, when climate change happens, when you have, you know, drought situation, flood situation, heat wave situation, you know, they affect men and women differently, particularly in the global south. So, for instance, you know, largely these are women folks in the rural part of, uh, say for example, India who have to, you know, travel long distances to fetch water to feed their family members, you know. Uh, they have to uh, disproportionately spend large amount of time in the house looking after, you know, providing food to the family members. So, therefore, you know, when these environmental crises happens, the act, you know, men probably are more uh, prone to moving out, women do not find it more, uh, you know, uh, they are not accustomed to move out as freely as men. So, therefore, uh, these climate um, you know, change actually trigger a lot of uh, different uh, reactions from men and women. Furthermore, uh, we also observe that, you know, people may not be able to migrate as they lack, you know, means and resources to do so. So, there is a general tendency, you know, when this is, there is climate change and when, when an area is exposed to climate change impact, we, we believe that largely people would love to or maybe they are forced to move out. But there are also section of people that who, who will not be able to move out simply because, you know, moving out is a very expensive exercise. Only those few who have some resources probably would, would seek to go out and look for opportunity elsewhere. But there are also section of people who are so poor, who do not have enough resources even to move out in the face of adversity driven uh, through climate change, you know. So, when there are poorer households, particularly in the rural areas, you know, who do not have resources even to go out elsewhere. They do not have knowledge and information and means to seek alternative opportunities in uh, elsewhere. And hence, uh, they face the disproportionate burden of climate change. You know, there are some people who have some resources, some imperfect knowledge, they may go to other places and survive. But among them also, there are a few who do not have knowledge, means or information to go elsewhere for securing their survival. So, this is a recent, uh, you know, publication from the World Bank called the World Development Report 2023, which presents a very nice schematic uh, understanding of how climate change is actually triggering, you know, human migration and displacement. So, because of, you know, global environmental change, we have this global warming, increasing sea levels, you know, precipitation and extreme weather events are increasing. So, these are actually leading to, you know, huge stress. Uh, 
on the income or earning capacity of the people. Because large proportion of human population is engaged in agriculture and allied and primary sector in the global south. So, when these climate and weather events, extreme events, their frequency and intensity is rising, it is leading to a scenario where it is become very difficult for people to secure the means of subsistence, you know. So, the earning options are going down. Many times the livestock, you know, which are part of agriculture and primary sector, it's very difficult to rear them and look after them when, when they don't have, you know, enough water or enough, you know, green areas to graze them. Similarly, you know, there is a huge stress also on habitation in settlements are also inundated, destroyed, you know, so um, the quality of soil deteriorates. So, all put together, you know, there is a huge pressure on the human population, which is already struggling with you know poverty poor health job insecurity livelihood insecurity gender uh, uh, disparities you know so all these effects are actually compounded and multiplied through climate change implication so the net effect is what there are some people who choose to move out there are certain people who choose not to move out but there are also certain group of people who even if they want to go out are unable to go out largely because they do not have information or means to make a conscious choice to you know whether they want to live here or move elsewhere correct so i think this is an important uh, schematic understanding of how climate change and environmental changes are likely to impact human migration this is a it is a multifactorial uh, framework and this can help us to get a deeper insight that you know it is very difficult to say that climate change directly impacts migration, but it is important for us to understand that climate change does aggravate the possibility of human population to move out, given that they magnify the existing burden of poverty, existing burden of poor health, existing burden of food insecurity, existing burden of water insecurity, livelihood insecurity. So, when these are multiplying, then there is a huge stress on human population to decide whether they want to move out elsewhere and seek alternative opportunity in different region of the country within country or outside country. You know there is another important uh, perspective to look at you know with climate change and global environmental crisis coming up you know there is a mobility continuum. So, a lot of people are finding themselves in a situation like a refugee you know due to climate change increasing vulnerability. So, there is displacement for sure because of environmental driven displacements. So, a lot of people because of you know floods, because of drought, because of heat waves, because of you know there are also small island states which are actually getting inundated with rising sea levels. So, lot of people are finding very difficult to survive in their native places and they are being displaced because of these extreme you know global environmental crisis. And there are also people who uh, you know who have got some economic capital, social capital means where if yeah, they are finding in themselves in a in a situation where they are you know stuck with multiple droughts or floods or you know heat waves, then they decide to move elsewhere they, where they can secure their own life and their family lives. So, this is a, another important schematic perspective if you want to understand how migration happens. So, we have discussed in some earlier lecture as well that primarily it is economic motive at the place of origin and destination weighing upon which individual decide whether he or she wants to move out. Again with economic we have social consideration. So, for example, uh, availability of good uh, education facilities, healthcare services, infrastructure etcetera based on you know which people make a estimation where it is better for them to live or not to live. And then we also know that political and civil situation in a given place also many times push people to go some other place where they have security of life and livelihood. Now, these perspective, these dynamics are you know modified through global environmental changes. So, what happens is that global environmental crisis deepens the existing divides and structures in the society and therefore, it makes the life of people even more 
difficult and then people decide you know whether they want to migrate or they would like to stay behind but again i would like to reiterate a fact that deciding whether to migrate or stay back is in some way a luxury for those who have a means of information and means of resources to do so there are also lot of population and human beings who do not have information who do not have resources and thus they do not decide what to do or not to do you know so basically they stay back there and uh, they grapple with and and face disproportionate brunt of climate change uh, you know crisis and therefore they are known as the trapped population so what is a trapped population Tra trapped population basically refers to uh, a, a, a segment of population that disproportionately is exposed to global environmental crisis at the same time they do not have you know wealth or level of capital whether it is economic social or political to move out elsewhere and hence they are uh, trapped locally you know to face disproportionately the impact of global environmental crisis whether it is flood whether it is drought whether it is heat wave whether it is sea floor rising whether it is glacier related issues so these trapped population find it very difficult to go elsewhere and hence disproportionately they are affected by the global environmental challenges if you look at uh, one recent example you know which is published in the world development report of 2023 that talks about human migration in the face of climate change one of the chapters so they clearly say that you know with climate change coming into the picture it actually you know uh, deepens the the shackles of poverty you know it actually leads to higher mortality burden so rapid population growth in some regions of the world and also you know because with population increasing rampant poverty there is a huge competition to secure resources in the country and hence this, there is a political and social crisis and there is a, a state of political fragility so all this put together you know this intertwined drivers of human mobility predict whether some people would live in that region or they would choose to move out and one of the classic case today um, is the sub saharan africa you, we all know that sub saharan africa is is facing a very unique set of challenges on the one hand it is a region in the world where there is a huge demographic churning happening where population is growing very rapidly today it is roughly 1.2 billion people who are living in sub saharan africa and by the year 2050 they are projected to be 2.5 billion people living over there there is a large number of fragile and conflict Uh, driven countries for example eritrea you know congo you know somalia many such countries are you know grappling with uh, civil and political unrest and there is the huge vulnerability to climate change you know we we observe frequent episodes of droughts floods and heat waves affecting these regions so you know what is happening that climate change alone uh, has led to 34% reduction in the agriculture production in sub saharan africa since 1961 so there is a huge stress impact related to food security in the sub saharan africa directly related to climate change impacts so therefore you know the sub saharan africa is likely to see rapid population movement in the coming decades some under distress circumstances so what is happening is there are already plethora of challenges whether it is because of low gdp in sub saharan africa rampant burden of poverty secondly of course fertility levels are relatively high so roughly 6 to 7 children per woman in sub saharan some of the sub saharan african countries and so what is happening is that with you know rapid population growth because of you know insecure life there is rampant poverty low food supply so what is happening is that people are struggling to survive and climate change is likely to magnify these challenges so if you look at you know the climate vulnerability is disproportionately concentrated in these asian and sub saharan african countries so you know even if you look at some of the historical documents of climate change they have been talking about you know measures to enhance the understanding coordination and cooperation related to human displacement migration and planned relocation so this was referred to united nations framework convention on climate change in cancun adaptation framework in the year 2010 the sunday framework for disaster risk reduction also refers to you know uh, 
focusing on disaster displacement and uh, it talks about uh, you know targets and priorities for action to prevent and reduce disaster risk including through governance investment in disaster reduction for resilience and disaster display um, preparedness recovery rehabilitation and reconstruction so the sandai framework articulates the need to include migrants in the disaster risk reduction and man management in these important areas uh, so therefore you know finally if you look at this paris agreement the preamble of the paris agreement also states that you know the parties should basically the different government in uh, in the world that when taking action to address climate change respect uh, promote and consider their respective obligation on migrants so it's very clearly stated that you know they have recognized that with increasing episodes of global environmental crisis human population are likely to be affected and among them migrants are going to be a very important category so there is a need to have uh, a policy in place wherein these migrants whether they are refugees whether they are uh, you know uh, climate uh, migrants they need to be respected they need to be properly rehabilitated and so there has to be a proper financial and political instrument in place to take care of these environmental related distress migrants and uh, going forward you know an, another important issue is related to you know the way forward for example what can we do in in the face of increasing evidence of global environmental crisis so one of the important things that is on the table for sure is the climate mitigation there is lot of uh, global uh, efforts being made from global south and global north uh, in different uh, you know meetings of the uh, the 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 committee of parties on climate change ipcc and uh, at international level so they come on, coming up with plans uh, wherein natural and human systems are you know highly stressed owing to global warming so in order to address the severity of the future climate impacts i think it's likely to depend on the extent to which international collective action can curb these global warming so climate mitigation is one of the important agendas wherein effort has to be made in order to reduce the climate change impacts so there needs to have instruments in place both financial instruments and also you know policies in place wherein uh, alternative uh, ways of economic activity lifestyle and people's participation must be brought into picture in order to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases and reduce global warming if we have to ensure that you know the distressful impact of climate change are reduced of course second is uh, important challenges which is related to climate adaptation so in order to make sure you know the impact of climate change is reduced adaptation is another important key you know why because extent to which you know vulnerable countries can build their resilience and adapt to climate change you know depends on appropriate financial uh, instruments so you know building resilient resilience is very important so resilience is nothing but you know responding back in the face of adversity so when climate change presents challenges for life and livelihood of people there is a need to invest into these people so that they have alternative livelihood option to survive and finally we need migration and protection policies to secure the life of these climate driven migrants thank you